Hello friends, Pumibi here again with another hot new tutorial. In today's video, we'll be working on the embellishments done on this gorgeous, gorgeous outfit worn by Vicky James and also made by Vicky James herself. We'll be doing the 3D work done on the dress as well as the beading done on the waist area. If you'll be interested, please make sure you watch this video all the way through. Like, share, subscribe and don't forget to leave me your comments. Let's go. Hello friends and welcome back to another tutorial. This is Fumibi here again with another amazing, amazing tutorial. Thank you for spending another beautiful day with me. Thank you. All right, so in today's video, as you guys must have seen from the intro, we are going to be working on cre recreating now, recreating the gorgeous, gorgeous embellishments done on Vicky James's birthday dress. I think her birthday was in June. She's also a June baby, just like me. If you don't know, I was born in the month of June on the 21st day of June. And Vicky also had a birthday in June. I'm not quite sure of the exact date, so I don't want to say what I don't know, but she had a birthday in June. And she wore a lot of amazing amazing outfits i have a couple of embellishment tutorials just sharing how i believe some of the dresses that she wore on her birthday were embellished i don't know if some of those videos have already started rolling out on the channel but the tutorials are coming so in today's video we'll be working on that particular traditional attire that she wore like I always say for people that are new here, my channel is not a sewing channel per se. I occasionally come on here with sewing videos, but it's not my strong forte. So that's why I don't like to share tutorials on it. What I love doing is creating embellishment work, fabric embellishments, 3D appliques for headpieces, fabric dresses, and all of that. That's what you typically find on here on my channel. So in today's video, we are going to be talking about that 3D applique done from one of the shoulder area all the way to like the hip area of the dress so we are going to be talking about how that applique situation was achieved and i'm going to be using this damask fabric the fabric that she has on here it looks like all these luxurious um judge like type of fabrics that's definitely not the fabric i have here i am not trying to replicate exactly what she wore i'm just trying to give you guys an idea on how i believe the applique work done on it was done so you need your fabric of choice of course for me i'm working with this damask fabric i believe i've shared a tutorial on how i reinforced this damask fabric so this damask is reinforced it's not flimsy like your typical damask i reinforced it if you've not seen that video i'll leave it somewhere on the show notes please go check it out it will help you know how to reinforce something like this and create something similar to this you'll also be using copper wire and i have this my copper wire right here it's the size zero point okay it's upside down it's the size 0 0.71 millimeters copper wire and i also have my cup chain right here as well the iridescent gold type of cup chain and i have things like my thread snipper my gas lighter and my scissors and my plier right here these are all the items that we'll be working with for the sake of today's video guys please pay attention do not skip any part of this video we are going to be talking extensively on how to recreate what we have on that dress i hope you all enjoy we'll also be doing the dangling chain beading pattern done along the waist area of that dress as well so hold on all the way through like this video subscribe to this channel share this video with a friend feel free to drop your questions down in the comment section and let's get started all right guys so starting off with the 3d applique i'm just going to roll out a little quantity well not so little about um let me get my measuring tape and give you guys the exact measurements so you want your, your copper wire now. I'm working with my copper wire just in case you are curious. So when trying to create something like your 3D applique, I would suggest that you roll out a quantity of copper wire that after like creating the shape you want to create with your copper wire, you still have like a little stem situation going on. It's that stem that will help you arrange your, your 3D applique in a beautiful way. That's at least that's how I find that, you know, working with copper wire, that's what is easy for me. But ultimately, like I always say, my tutorial is not the end all be all. Please ultimately do things that are easy for you, things that work for you. So I need a quantity of copper wire that is about nine, it's between eight and nine inches long. So once I have that, or oh, I think I should even reduce it to about seven inches. I feel like that quantity is a bit too much. Copper wire is not cheap. I don't think I want to do six inches. Six inches is fine. So I'm going to cut out about three of these, just so this tutorial gives what it's supposed to give. So three pieces of copper wire that are about six inches long. Like I always say, do what works for you. If six inches is too much for you, reduce it. If it's too little, 
increase it just do the needful and i'm using this my little plier to just cut the copper wire I, I found that when you use your scissors to cut the copper wire it kind of it makes your scissors go blunt faster so get a plier i've talked about items required for items that make my life easy as a craft maker i have a video just detailing all the necessary things that i think you should get if you are trying to do work similar to what i do go check out that video i'll link it on the screen for you it will be very valuable to you so now that i have these three depending on the shape i'm going for i would kind of shape them into that shape i've said shape a lot but i hope we are following so as we can see on the dress on vicky james the dress is shaped into or the 3d appliques now are shaped into like a leaf pattern so i'm going to just also follow suit and create like a leaf situation with this my 3d or with this my copper wire now that i'm working with this i see that that six inches is a little too small so guys i would recommend about eight inches because this my stem is too small can you see the little stem situation that we have here so if you want something longer please increase the quantity of or the length of copper wire they are working with so now that i have something like this i'm just going to shape these remaining two wires into this leaf shape like i always say or like i've said in a previous video leaf shape is not the only shape that you can shape your copper wire into you can craft your copper wire into any shape of your choice so feel free to just go off but because we are trying to we are working with something right we are trying to recreate something that's why I felt the need to just create this um, leaf shape. So I'm just going to do this for this remaining two. Now that I've done these three, I'm going to do one more. And you guys are going to see how that one more comes into play. So this is the fourth one. After doing this, I'm just going to go ahead and use my fabric glue, the E7000 glue. I'm going to apply glue all over the rim of these my shapes that I've cut out. And then just place them onto this organza fabric and i'm going to do that real quick All right guys, so I'm just going to set this aside, allow it dry down very well. But as you can see, I have four here. If you want to do 100 of this, do. If you want to do 1000 of this, right? Like just go off and do as many as you need to. And I'm just going to set this aside and then move on to the next one. I've done this in a previous video, but because again, the numbers have grown since the last time I did this, I'm going to do this on here again. So I have just my regular schmegula copper wire that I folded into this leaf shape. The next thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab my cup chain and basically figure out the quantity that I need for this copper wire. Please stay with me. Let's not get distracted. And then come to this other side again. Figure out the quantity of copper wire that I need. Once I have it, I'll just pick this up and cut like so then i'm going to grab my glue of course and then apply this all over place this on top of it all 
Repeat what I did here on this other side, apply my glue. Then place my copper wire, I mean my cup chain on top. I right, see so what we have here. Amazing. So I'm just going to set this aside as usual and allow it dry down very, very well. And remember to always cover up your fabric glue. I know someone might come and say, oh, can I use hot glue for this? I do not recommend using hot glue for this. I recommend using this type of glue, E7000 or one of these as well. I have some other ones here, your B, B7000, B6000 or E8000 glues that look like this basically those are the types of glues i would recommend for this but if you decide that okay it's um hot glue that is going to rock your boat please go off and do that like i always say take whatever i tell you with a pinch of salt do what you are comfortable with ultimately so now i feel like i've left this for a while so i just want to basically trim off the excess fabric along the edges Another thing you can also follow this up with, if you were trying to maybe like um, create a beaded 3D applique, before cutting off all this excess fabric around, you can go ahead and bead. As your fabric or your stuff was attached to your fabric, you can just bead in between if that's what you're going for. But because all we are trying to achieve is just a 3D applique, can we see what we have here? And this is what the back looks like. Like I said, I have a video on how I reinforced this fabric to create this. For those that are new here and are interested in a beginner friendly tutorial, you will find that video very, very valuable. As a further step, I like to just take my gas lighter and just basically seal up the edge of my work. And this is what we have right here. I'm going to go ahead now and repeat what I did here for every other thing here before we now come back to this other work that we we're doing earlier on. If you've been enjoying this video so far, please comment glitter. Okay, glitter is a comment for the day. Let me know how you guys feel about this video if you're enjoying it. If you have someone that would like this type of video as well, please hit the share button and support this video. Don't be afraid to also use the super thanks button. It helps me greatly and I always appreciate receiving a token from you guys. It's not compulsory, so don't feel pressured. All right, guys, so this is what we have here with all these, our leaves. Like I said earlier, I'm going to repeat it again. You can do as many of these as you want and set them aside. So we're going to come back to this particular copper wire here. So take this copper wire from looking basic to looking amazing. What you need is a very thin size of wire. And for this, I'm going to be working with the 0.50 millimeters copper wire like what I have here, okay? If you have the 0 0.30 or 0.315 size of copper wire, feel free to use it. But because it's a 0 0.50 I have, I'm just going to make do with what I have. And I'm going to roll out whatever quantity it is that you think is going to do for you. And then all you're doing is you're basically attaching this to this. You need to be very careful, guys. This is it's not something you can do, but you need to be you know, careful. Can you see what I'm doing? I wish I could zoom in further. Okay, I can actually. So you're just wrapping this around the work you've done previously, like so. I think I'm happy with what I have now, so I'm just going to cut this off. So say something like this. If I were to have used the 0.315 size of copper wire, it would have been finer than this, but as we can see on the dress on Vicky, we can see that there's something like this going on on that dress as well. So it's also a different way of adding even more spice to your work. Absolutely amazing. So imagine now coupling all of these together. And with coupling them together, you're just twisting their stems together like so, something like this. There's already one like this. Then you can come here again, add another one again, twist. 
the beauty of having copper wire is to attach them to each other you are just twisting them if you need help you can incorporate your your um, what's it called plier to it so we have something like this we've also worked on this net one i believe that tutorial is on the channel already how to use nets to create 3d applications you can just stack them on each other in a very aesthetically pleasing way imagine placing this on an outfit and just layering it on each other and i've shared a different video where i showed how you can sew um, 3d appliques with this type of stem onto fabric i'll do my best to link that video on the screen i hope it's already on the channel so that's basically it guys for the 3d applique portion of this video incredibly amazing and with like i always say with 3d appliques because of the copper wire inside you can you know basically the the wire allows for flexibility like you can just move this around and shape it into whatever you choose anyhow anyhow guys like i always say there's no limits to how creative you can get with this stuff like amazing amazing stuff can we see what we have here tell me this does not look amazing just arrange it on your outfit layer them on each other maybe it's becoming down like this on each other like so something like this on a, on a piece of outfit amazing so i hope this um tutorial was valuable and on tiktok i posted one of these um tutorials on tiktok and someone was asking me oh how do people that make clothes with this amount of 3d applique how do they wash it this type of outfit if you have an outfit that is like this i don't think you will buy clothes from someone like vicky james and you'll be using your hand to wash it or you'll be throwing it inside your washing machine take those types of outfits to a dry cleaner for you to be able to afford outfits that have this kind of embellishments, dry cleaning should not be a challenge for you. So take this type of outfit to a dry cleaner. They know how to delicately wash your outfit to make sure that all the embellishments done on it stays put and intact. So I hope we all enjoyed this portion. Now to move to the dangling chain beading done on that outfit. I'm just going to grab a piece of fabric and then show us how to go about it. If you've not liked this video, please hit the like button. It supports me greatly. All right, guys, so very quickly to the portion where we have the dangling beading done on the dress. As you can see along the waist area of the dress, you can see some dangling chain beading pattern. And um, we see that on the dress, we have some golden teardrop crystal beads. And we have, I think that looks like some broken glass beads. Ultimately, I can't really see. You guys, tell me what you think it is in the comment section if you're interested. But for me, because I know that that particular bead or beading pattern can be achieved using any type of bead. I'm going to be working with some teardrop crystal beads, just like what we have in the video. And there are different types or different sizes of teardrop crystal beads. Why do I keep saying crystal? Crystal beads. So we see that this size here, this golden one is smaller than this one. I've used this too in different tutorials. If you are new here, please catch up on my older videos. It will help you greatly. So for me, I'm going to use a combination of this um, blue is like very light shade of royal blue or cobalt blue and some gold Crystal beads in size 6 Okay, I have this size 6 crystal beads and this so these are the combinations I'm going to be working with So for this question, please pay attention. I'm gonna head to thread my needle I'm using the size 9 beading needle. Please use any size of beading needle that you like. I've talked about beading needle the sizes and how to choose the right type of beading needle for the right work please go check out that video again check the description bar of this video you'll see some relevant links there so feel free to go check them out so i'm going ahead to knot up my fishing line i'm just going to pick one single crystal beads why did i say crystal beads one single crystal bead just like i just did and then i'm going to pass it all the way down to the end of my of my thread i've done this in a different video but i'm doing it again for the new people and i'm passing my needle through these knots you see these knots that we did for this our thread the camera needs to behave this knot here i'm going to just pass my needle through it and then pull it through like so can you see what we have here this is what we are trying to achieve just knotting up and creating this right here at the end. So this bead right here is like a stopper for the remaining beads that will be passing through this 
needle and thread and the thread i'm using this time is fishing line you can use your invisible thread even though i don't recommend use fishing line or polyester thread that's what i recommend for this type of work because if you use invisible thread because invisible thread is not so strong it might cut over time but with fishing line and for the fishing line i'm using the 0 0.25 millimeters fishing line what did i just do I'm using the 0 0.25 millimeters fishing line. You can use the 0 0.30 if that's what is your jam and make it work for you. And for those that might be curious, so what does she mean by polyester thread? Polyester thread is your regular sewing thread. This type of thread, this is what they call polyester thread. So depending on the length, I've said so so many times, guys, please apologies. Depending on the length of bead that you want to use for your dangling chain pattern you just keep passing beads through your line okay so i'm just going to keep passing oh i've made a mistake i've made a mistake guys <laughs> oh my goodness i have to start again because i wanted to incorporate some some um teardrop crystal bead so i could easily decide to pass this this size can we see what we have here I first of all used this size of crystal bead as the stopper then i passed this size i can even go further and add another one there's no limits there's no rule to this game for my own i can do okay i want a combination of gold and blue and then after that you now start to pass your regular crystal beads through this portion where i'm passing crystal beads going forward you can pass any type of bead even this one that I'm using teardrop crystal beads, you can use pearls, you can use seed beads, you can use sand beads, you can use broken glass beads, you can use rice beads, any type of bead can work. So don't feel limited. This is just a tutorial and to give you an idea of how to go about doing something like this with your own work. Okay? So once I've passed this to the length that I want, I think I'm just going to stop here so this video does not drag for too long. I will now grab my cloth. Depending on the portion of where I want to sew this to, I will just pass my needle through. On this dress on Vicky, now we can see that this, this beading was done on the waist area. So the beader must have passed their needle through the waist to the length. And when doing this kind of work, another thing, don't pull too firmly. If I pull too firmly now, this is how my dangling chain will be standing. It will not be jiggly and flowy. Just release it a little bit. You're just passing it lightly through the fabric such that you get some kind of dangling situation going on. I don't know how to explain it. Just the point I'm trying to make here is don't pull too tight. Don't pull too tight. Okay. My stuff is getting tangled up. Okay. So don't pull too tight, just lightly so that the work will still be dangling. Can we see what we have here? I'm trying my best to give you guys a good viewing experience. Can you see how it's dangling? You want your work to dangle freely like this. So, if you're making an outfit, you do as many of these as you choose to do, okay? It's not me that will tell you how many you want to do, depending on the outfit you're creating and the situation you're in. Do as many as you please and create something amazing. Another option, alternative to doing this type of bidding where you do this, you can use your stopper. I've showed us a stopper before and I've showed you how to use a stopper. If you've not seen the video, please go check it out. You can put a stopper at the end of your work, at the tip right here. I put the stopper there and pass my beads through. If you want me to do another video using stopper, even though I feel like it's pretty self-explanatory, please let me know down in the comment section. I'll film it in another tutorial. But that's it, guys. This is how to create the dangling chain beading pattern that we see on that outfit. Let me just knot up my stitch and conclude this video for us. So this is it, friends. This is all for today's video. We worked on some 3D appliques. We also worked on creating the dangling chain beading pattern. Remember that you can use any type of bead for this. And also for this, you can use any type of fabric. I taught you guys how to use net to create something like this in a different video. And today we used a combination of damask to create this. Placing this aesthetically on your outfit is what will give you something similar to what we have on this dress worn by Vicky James and also designed by her for her birthday. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a big thumbs up. It helps me know that you guys got value from watching my content. Also, don't hesitate to share with your friends. It will just make me very, very happy. Thank you guys so much again for watching today's tutorial. And yeah, friends, I can't wait to see you in another tutorial very, very soon. Bye-bye.